If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual business coach. I am here as always on Wednesdays with my best friend in Boquete, Catherine Loranger. And you nailed it. I did you it right. It. Yes. I have it down. It's I've got the, the name. It's the <laughs> I've only known you for two freaking years, man. <laughs> so, and, uh, and we are talking today about, I've got the power, right? Owning oh, your power yeah. in business. And, uh, and in so. Life. And in life. And in life. Yes. Yeah, they're and connected. So they are. They are connected. So, you know, today's topic is near and dear to my heart because it's been sort of the, the core of the work that I do with people. And, you know, because you here's the thing. When I do seer scans, right, I do a, a spiritual evolution energy review, right? That's that's me and my team. We we do these. And when we do them, <clears throat> one of the things that we look at is in the sixth chakra, we're looking at, are you owning your power? And there are a lot of things that get in the way of owning your power. And so, you know, if so, we talk so about Kelly, it, can, yeah. you, can, you, can you say maybe like, what does owning your power mean to you when you're talking about that to get some context? Yeah. So owning your power means giving yourself access to all of your abilities, to all of your personal, your, your, in, your intention and your focus and all of the things that make you a creative being, a, a divinely creative being in the world. So it's, it is very much a, it, it, it has multiple layers to it, right? Because there's the layer of do I allow myself to be powerful in my own life? Meaning, do I set boundaries? Do I have goals? Do I make sure that I am the hero of my own life, right? My own story. It also means, do I allow myself access to my energetics? Can I use the manifestation abilities that I have? Can I put energy out into the world? Can I energetically protect myself? Can I energetically protect my space? It's, um, am I giving myself access to the full force of energy that mm -hmm. can and have the potential to run through me? Mm, okay. So there's like an inner end and outer component to it. Yeah. 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 Is that different than what you would say if you were to um, ask the same question? I so I think like, yes and no. So, so definitely like owning, accessing, being aware, cognizant of, of what you have to offer your gifts, your talents, but also owning how you show up in the world. So you, the decisions that you make, like you said, boundaries, um, what you say yes to, what you say no to where you leave little bits of yourself around, maybe where you have given your power away in the past where you've consented to someone taking your power away. Yeah. So I think it's very, very similar for me. I would think more about, you know, kind of like stepping into the full potential of who you are mm -hmm. and expressing it. Right. Because I think there's a difference where you kind of develop and, and hone your talents and gifts and abilities. But then if you choose not to express them in the world, you're not fully stepping into, mm -hmm. into your authentic power. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this in, in the, th the sixth chakra, one of the things that shows up is we often will limit our power based on a few very specific things. And some of that is that from an energetic perspective, sometimes if we were killed in our, in another life for a gift, our gift, then we will limit our power because we're like, oh, I'm going to die again. Right. And, and, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes we will get our, <clears throat> it, I actually just had this show up in one of the readings. So if you have been listening, you'll have heard the episode where I found that somebody had been cursed from a past life because of their gifts. And so that's the first time I found that, but that could be the case for you too. And 
you know, the other piece that really shows up a lot is that if you have a huge well of rage, which a lot of my people do, almost all of my people do, uh, then if you are a good hearted person, which again, almost all of, or I would say all of my people are, then what you find is that you will limit your access to power because you occasionally go nuclear and blow up on everybody. And if you had more power, you might actually lay waste to the world and you don't want to do that. You already feel bad enough about going nuclear on the people around you and therefore that's not okay. And therefore you don't want to give yourself more power. And so all of that, right? So there's a reason why we are always talking to you about how the energetic world's power, the, you know, developing your skills and your abilities on the energetic requires doing your inner work as well on the personal growth side, because when we don't address one, it directly impacts the other. And so, you know, this is one of those pieces that, that, that I talk about a lot with people, right? And so, you know, a lot of it is history and family dynamic and some of its cultural dynamic. I mean, women are trained to be the, the grease that, that greases the wheels of society and we have to make everybody happy and we have to make it okay. Of course, I'm talking my generation and up, I think it's a little different from millennials and Gen Z and Gen, Gen Y and all of that. But, you know, we, we had that and we may have passed it to our children. So, you know, we've got to be aware of that. And <clears throat> there's a lot of pieces and parts that go into owning your power. Mm -hmm. So on a business level, Catherine, yeah. what would you say to people about the relevance of owning your power in your business? Mm -hmm. I'm just, there's like just this huge part of me, Kelly, that is like laughing so hard inside because you're talking about all of, I'm like tick, 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 right? Like one of my past, and I'm digressing a little bit, but one of my kind of like past life experiences, I was so enraged at how people were treating the planet that I literally became a volcano and wiped out a society. Like that was one of my past, right? Like that. So talk about I was kind of, I was kind of pissed. I was a little, I was a little pissed. So just as you were talking about those, I'm just like, I'm like, tick, 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 tick. Yes. So that's so funny because that is not the first time I've heard that story from someone. And mm -hmm. so I wonder if you were sharing that life with another person that I know, wouldn't that oh, be interesting? interesting? Yeah, that would be interesting. Because that that's be a really unique story, right? Yeah, that's like a unique experience for <laughs> like, sure. Who who has that? But I actually yeah. the person who has the same story. And that's, oh, that's, that's interesting. So, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. So, okay. So back, back, to, business. <laughs> back to business. So I'm not going to like turn into a volcano. And it's interesting because we actually live in Bocchetti. There is a, there is a volcano here. So yeah. Yeah. Curious and curious. I'm getting hits on that, but <laughs> so in, in business, you know, I think owning your power means being responsible for your decisions, being willing to be the person who steps up and makes a decision and carries it through being willing to make mistakes, being willing to take action when it's not perfect, I can give you an example of when I did not own my power, had an opportunity to connect with a major client who was looking for a new contractor in the type of work that we did. It was like a multi-million dollar kind of project. So not a small project. And I got stuck in, it's got to be perfect. So I've got to do all this research before I go and talk to them instead of owning my power picking up where they wrote their personal cell phone number on their business card, call me, picking it up and, and just stepping into making that call and making that connection. So that's an example of not owning power, right? Of giving power away to someone else or this idea that other people know better than you, right? And yeah. yes, in business, you're going to be learning. You want to work with mentors. You want to work with coaches. You want to, you know, you, it, there's, there's skills that you're going to have to develop, but you need to learn how to filter those through yourself to say, does this resonate for me? Right. And, and that authentic reson, reson, resonance, resonation, 
the, the, the authentic, right? So it's not your fear that's showing up and saying, it's not, you know, don't go do this, don't go do that. So one of the other things that I see people do is they leave little bits of themselves and bits of their power in past experiences, maybe decisions that didn't work out the way that they wanted to, ideas about themselves where they say like, oh, I'm I'm this or I'm that, I'm not cut out for business, I'm you know not good with money, I don't know how to do this. One of my clients really, she really leaned into working to learn how to manage her KPIs or key performance indicators for her business. And the story that she had been telling herself and giving away her power to was, I'm not good with numbers. I don't know how to do this. This is really hard. I'm I'm the one who does the service or does the actual thing in my business, but I can't do that. And so we just worked with it, leaned into it, leaned into it, leaned into it. And now she freaking loves doing her KPIs <laughs> and her business is informed by metrics and numbers, and she can make good decisions based on those. And so when she stepped into doing that, the amount of power that came back to her that she reclaimed, right, instead of telling herself this story, where she'd left little bits of herself. So those are some those are some examples. Yeah, I'm going to jump in because I was on uh, the flare up podcast yesterday, and <clears throat> they asked me a question. And I, I, it's a question I've never been asked before. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And the guys, what, what the guy said, Peter, um, <clears throat> is he said, can you explain to me why sometimes successful people have a hard time repeating their success when they go on to the next thing? And I was like, huh, that is a question nobody's ever asked. And I was, I gave him some ideas. I was like, okay, so this could be ancestral lineage stuff, right? Where you have a, you have an ancestral lineage history of things going boom and bust and boom and bust, and that could cause it. Right. But, and, and then he had said that he had moved to different countries and I was like, okay, well, you know, success and money are related to physical space it's re related to being on the planet money doesn't mean anything in the in the ethers right in the astral and so you know if you're not grounded into the space that you're in then your success could be lesser than what it would have been in the place where you were fully grounded in where you were born and things like that and so you would have to work on actually ground again right and but then i i thought about it after the podcast because you know <clears throat> new question and i was like huh. Yeah. yeah, let me be with that, right? But mm. ultimately, I think what it comes down to for me as I'm I'm feeling into the energy of it is that oftentimes when we have our first success, we are passionate about the thing that we're doing and we are super excited about it and we are focused on it and we are single-minded about it and <clears throat> we pursue it to the to the exclusion of everything else, right? It is all in. And when you have your, when you're working on your second success, when you've let go of that first baby, right? There's a, there's a place where you have, you've, you've had to grieve the loss of the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're trying to create the second thing, but you know that there's probably going to be a grieving point for this at some point down the road. And so mm -hmm. do you really invest as much? Do you really get as passionate about it? Do you really do this? And what I find with people doing their second or third thing is that they're often going, is this the right thing? Because there's this, you know, prodigy thing of, you know, well, was I a flash in the pan and was it a fluke and all of the, you know, not good enough imposter syndrome comes back up again and all of that. And so, you know, that's limiting factor as well. And so, you know, there's a lot of pieces and parts and all of this is about owning your power, right? It's about standing in it and being like, you know, just because, you know, it's, it's this whole thing of it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, right? It's like, you got to let go of the fact that you may end up grieving this in the future. <clears throat> you have to let go of the idea that maybe I can't do it again, right? You have to let go of the idea of all of these, these what ifs and these distractions of, oh, well, maybe not this way, but that way. And I think that that's another piece that happens is the, the, you know, sort of the panic pivot stuff we've talked about. Right. Oh, and yeah. so there's a, a piece of this that is very much about 
really standing in your authentic self, really standing in your power, really standing in the place where you make conscious choices based on unrestricted, unlimited beliefs about mm -hmm. yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of the work that we do when stepping into your power is about being able to get rid of those limiting beliefs, get rid of those assumptions that you make about yourself, get yeah. yourself focused and, and on track, allow yourself to be passionate, give yourself permission to have and to receive. And, you know, each time you're, you're at a new level of success, you have to be willing to let in that new level of success. Yeah. So, you know, like I'm, I'm setting up the spirit guide school right now and, you know, it'll be launched before this episode comes out, but I'm setting it up as we're recording it. <clears throat> and the, the company that I, I have bought the system from to get everything put together on is, you know, they keep coming through with this idea of set points in money mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a set point at hundred thousand dollars a year. And that seems to be sort of like a magical number for people. And that number has been there. I, I hit this number when I was training real estate agents back in the nineties. Okay. So this number has been there a long time and that's a set point. And that's a, you know, can I really do this number? And once you get over that, you're like, Oh yeah, I'm all good. And then what he's saying is that he he's been seeing a lot of people hitting it. He's like, there's no other set point until you hit a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And you know, then, then that's the second set point. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's very interesting because uh, between a hundred thousand a year and a million a year is a huge shift, right? <laughs> it's a huge it's transition. Just a zero. It's just a zero. I know, I know, but, but, you know, there's a lot of space in between there is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. And so, you know, the fact that they don't hit the set point again until then is very interesting to me um, mm -hmm. because he's working on making money with people. That's his thing. And so he sees a lot more people than yeah. I do on that because I work with people on money, but I also work with them on spiritual stuff, just like you do. So what it yeah. takes to get to a hundred thousand is it's different Right. Like Absolutely. It, it's a, it, it takes something different to get to a million than yes. it does to a hundred thousand dollars. Like the thinking, the systems, the process, like all of that stuff, all of that. Totally stuff. different. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and all of the ways in which you operate within your business, you have to learn how to delegate. You have to learn how to, without abdicating, you have to learn how to, you know, yeah. supervise and how to, how to step yeah. out of the doingness and into the, the strategy. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of transition points that yeah. have to happen in order yeah. to take it to that level in your business. Yeah. And so, you know, that also requires owning your power in a totally different way. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, you know, let's, let's, let's give some tips because people are like, okay, well, you've proven to me that this, this is valid, but okay. let's, before, yeah. before we do that, can I just jump in and comment mm -hmm. on the question that you had at the, at, with the other podcast the success piece? Why, yeah. Yes. Success. Mm -hmm. So, so I think like what can also happen there is that somebody hasn't actually made a shift in identity. So it's, it's kind of happened, but there's a big part of them that doesn't believe it's repeatable or that that's who they are, or it was just lucky or right. So mm -hmm. to able to actually shift your identity is, is a part of stepping into your power and owning that this is who you are. Now you are this person. And so also there's something that, and I've talked about this before on the podcast too, called an upper limit, right? That's a yeah. that term that Kay Hendricks coined in his, his book, the big leap. So people will hit an upper limit, like, okay, well, I've made a hundred thousand dollars and I, I don't know how to you know, I don't know how to conceptualize that. I don't know how to manage it. I had the success and it's the edge of their kind of internal thermostat for how much quote unquote success they will have. So they'll like dial it down because it's just out of their comfort zone. So a, a tip, and we can kind of get into tips now in terms of how you stabilize your identity and your energetics at that greater level of success breath work is really powerful. So the in through the nose and out through the mouth, like a straw helps to shift your nervous system as you're, as you're doing that. So I was on a call actually with, with a fellow coach and she had just had her first million dollar day or million dollar day. <gasps> nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the, the support for her in terms of grounding that was to use that breath. So in through your nose and out through your mouth, like a straw. 
you're not counting it. What it does is it shifts your nervous system into your parasympathetic, which is that rest I just create. And then just to be like incredibly present in the room and look around and like look at, so I've got like a whiteboard, I've got palm trees up my window. I've got my, one of my dogs is sleeping over there. I've got my book. So I'm just looking around, being aware that this is a million dollar day and I'm just grounding myself in the present moment, right? So you're anchoring your nervous system in the knowingness and in the present. So it becomes safe for you to experience that. Yeah. And then one other tip I wanna I wanna give, and then I'll hand it over to you, Kelly. And I I do this when I travel. I tell all my clients to do it. We do it, you know, when we kind of start our calls, we'll do like a often I take them through a guided visualization meditation and we'll call our power back. But you can just like tap your hip a couple of times, like tap, tap and say, come on, Catherine, let's go. So if I've been traveling or I've been like out and about doing lots of things, and generally I'm pretty good about managing that, but sometimes I'm like, oh, like I just feel a little bit, you know, something's not quite there. Just like tap, tap. Okay, let's go. And it just like calls back all these little bits of yourself that you've left all over the place. I love that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, there's a, a piece here around this, when you're stepping into your power, there's, it's a, it's an identity shift, right? Mm -hmm. And so we talk a lot about identity shift on this podcast and that's because it's super important. And it's like out of everything, it's the most important thing you can do is to, to change. It's a thing. It's, it's the most. (laughs) Yes. And so, you know, the, the identity shift is, is crucial, right? And that's what I keep talking about. Anytime you're trying to manifest something, you have to become the person who has it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the concept of holding the vision and stepping into the beingness of that state, right. You know, I've been talking about this ad nauseum on podcasts and this one and other podcasts I've been doing that I was told that I was going to be a household name at the beginning of the year. And that, you know, all the stuff that came up around that and the fears and the, you know, fame and, oh my God, what do I really want that? And all of that. Right. And the stepping into it has involved an identity shift, right? Mm -hmm. Because with fame comes a higher level of income. It comes a higher level of, of people seeing you and being seen in the world and, you know, all of the pieces and parts there. Right. <clears throat> and so, you know, I've been stepping into i had only been afraid of the things that I was not wanting. Right. Yeah. I had not yeah. been in the stuff that I did want. And you were actually very helpful with with that for me. Catherine's like, but what would you love? And I'm like, but I don't want. She's like, no, no, but what do you want? What do you what would you love? Yeah. Right. And then and I'm like, right, 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 focus right. There's good stuff here, too. <laughs> what you focus on is going to grow. Right? right. And you get to choose. Yes. Consciously. What am I growing? What am I focusing on? Right. And mm-hmm. This, you know, I've been doing this work for 50 years and I still had to be reminded because I went into my crap, right? And this is, so don't feel bad about it is what I'm saying. You're a human. It's because you're a human being. So good job, Kelly. Good job, Kelly. Thank you. I'm human. Yes. And (laughs) so that's what I'm saying though, is don't, don't be upset with yourself about it. You know, Mm -hmm. the, the, the getting upset about it is a resistance piece. Okay. If you are judging yourself for not getting something, it is a resistance to moving because so long as you're sitting in that judgment, you still don't have to move. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. just let it go. And that, that I will say I was very good at, I was like, Oh, right. Yes. And it took me a minute to adjust my thinking because it was, it had been stuck there for a very long time. But just like a flip that you switch, right? So you you step into it, you start to feel it. It's going to feel brand new to you, your nervous system, your body, your brain, like none of it knows. And you're going to freak out, right? Your limiting beliefs are going to kind of come up and say, that's a danger while Robinson danger, (laughs) because it's just new. So then you, of course, you're going to like slip back. So then you like use the breath. Okay. And then you like step yourself back into it. And then of yep. course you're going to freak out. And so it's this process of like waffling in and out and in and out and in and out and in and out. And then pretty soon you're going to find that you're going to be more consistently in it. Yes. But it takes a commitment to practice. It does. And I am hitting that point now. And this is, we're recording this on the 26th of June. And mm. you know, this started for me, I've been, I've been sort of working on the whole idea of it for since probably October last year. 
And, you know, I, it hit full force when I had that reading in January. And now I'm, I'm really comfortable with it at this point. You know, I've been really working with it for a long time at this point. It's been eight months, right? And I've been actively working with it during that time. And I am now at the point where I'm like, yeah, okay, I can do this. I'm, I'm good with this. And so, but it's taken me all that time to get there, right? And that's, you know, I could have just as easily looked at it and gone, nah, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I might not have, I might have sat with it and, and looked at all of the possibilities and looked at what, what was the good and the bad and the indifferent about it and been like, no, I don't choose that for my life. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't want to make that choice out of a place of default knee-jerk reaction. I wanted to make that choice out of a place of conscious choice where yeah. I really gave yeah. it a good look, right? Yeah. And I could yeah. easily have done the knee-jerk reaction thing on this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is one of those things that, that when you're presented with change, you do want to, to stay in your power. You do want to consciously look at things and yeah. choose from a place of solid knowledge and full understanding of what it is yes. that you're looking at, not just from your knee jerk ah, thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and one way of, of accessing that is, and I, I talk about this and this is a lot of the work that I do with my clients too, is, is really tuning into what would I love, right? Yeah. Love being one of the highest vibrations. And if it really was possible, like if I really thought it was a possibility. Like, what would I actually love? Yeah. And of course, brain and your nervous system and your programming is going to come in and say, well, what about this? And what about that? And don't forget about this. And what are people going to think? And da, da, da. And, and that's actually good. It's good yeah. when that happens because all that stuff is there anyway in the background running the show. So when you ask that, well, what would I love? And really, really allow yourself to imagine that that is starting to give you an idea and an experience of what it feels like to be in your authentic power. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and a lot of the power pieces is also about, you know, power dynamics between other people too. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're a coach and you're intimidated by your client, you need to not have them as your client because yeah. you are not going to be able to do good for them because you, the power dynamics off. Right. Mm -hmm. That, you know, some of it is about being willing to tell people what to do. If you're somebody with oppositional disorder and you don't like to be told what to do and you're you're not going to tell other people what to do. And then people are going to feel like they don't understand what the container is that they're supposed to work in. They don't understand mm -hmm. what the expectations are. They don't know how to do it right or do it well because you haven't set the boundaries for them and set the expectations appropriately. And so, you know, if you don't deal with the fact that you've got that what is true for you is not necessarily true for them and that you need to adjust yeah. the way that you're structuring in order to make that work for them, then mm -hmm. that's also not standing in your power, right? There's, there's all kinds of ways and all sorts of so little twisty ways. things in which this stuff gets oh. in the way. Yeah. And this is why you work with a coach on this stuff, right? Because you can't see it all. Okay. It is, you know, there's so much of it. There's some of it that, that you, you know, is true, but you don't know it's about your power. You don't know it's about, you know, one thing or another in, in your life and other things you just don't see at all because they're just, assumptive to you, you know, or you're not even aware of the situation that's going on and you need somebody from outside of you go, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you go, whoa, you know, <laughs> but this is why we work with coaches. I mean, I can't tell you how many coaches I've worked with over the years and, and, you know, just spiritual teachers and, you know, friends who were therapists and, you know, therapists who were therapists, you know, <laughs> it's like, but you know, nobody is an Island and you can't figure it all out yourself. I'm, I, I just, you, life is, is complicated and life is, and you are complicated and figuring out the optimal path to get you where you want to go and to even know what you want for a lot of my people, they don't, there's like, I don't know what I want. I just want to not be, I'm, I want to not be miserable. That is not a, what would I love? That is a going that away from the pain, not, not no. going towards the pleasure, right? We want to get you to the point where you go towards the pleasure. And so <clears throat> the, you know, all of this 
is is a lot. And so having help along the way is super helpful in that yeah. regard. And and we're not meant I would say almost alone. required. Yeah. yeah. We're not meant to do this alone. No. 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 So with that, I think we will wrap up this episode. Yeah. Like we can yeah. go on for hours and hours. So it's like meh. <laughs> like a man on that and pack it up and we'll catch you next Wednesday. Yeah. So don't forget that what you focus on expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next week. Uh, I Ciao. will see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm